The stakes are high in this week's election, both politically and for some, it may have an effect on their mental health. Think about it. We have been talking about Election Day for more than a year now, and surely not every conversation has been an easy one. Joining us to talk about the toll that the election uh, can have and the, the election results can have is psychotherapist John Hirschfield from Shepherd Pratt. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. And we were just talking. I mean, this is real, this anxiety people are feeling. Indeed. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm feeling it right now, just right. discussing it, right? right? So uh, I think everybody's affected by it. And um, first, first, you know, some anxiety is normal and, and mm -hmm. appropriate and, and, and healthy. It means you care. It means you're interested in an outcome. And it's good that people are engaged and interested in, in you know, what's going to happen in their country. But uh, as we get closer and closer to the election, sometimes for some people, particularly uh, people with certain sensitivities, anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive mm -hmm. disorder, this anxiety can be overwhelming. It can be terrifying. You can feel a, an um, overestimated sense of responsibility for the outcomes that disconnect between how much control you want to have over the election and how much control you actually do have uh, right. can produce a lot of very strong stress response in right, the body. Right, because you don't have any control other than casting your own vote. Right. Right. And then you were saying it, in the past maybe you worried about you know things until that day, election day, then there's an answer and it's over. But there's a sense that that may not be the case and so it's like you feel like there's no end to it. There's a sense that something is different about this election, yeah. right? I've been getting asked this question a lot. Why am I so anxious about this election? I wasn't anxious about you know all these other elections my whole life and maybe a little bit here or there, but this feels different. And I do think that one of the things that has made it feel different is that uh, lack of a sense of certainty that if I could just hang on till the election, then it'll be over. Maybe I won't get the outcome I want, but at least I can let go of my anxiety about the election. But uh, people have a lot of doubts about how these elections are run, and there's this sense that uh, whichever candidate wins, somebody's going to be very unhappy, and, and, and there's going to be more stressful things to continue thinking about. So I think the average person would just like some relief from all of it. And unfortunately, in the current political climate, we don't get much yeah. of that. Yeah, and especially if you're on social media. That's a big part of the anxiety. Yes, and again, that's that divide, that, that uh, disconnect between how much control you want and how much control you have. So you could get actively engaged in something political. You could canvas. You can, you can get involved. Um, or you could be online and just see some mean thing and retweet it or re-Facebook it or something like that mm -hmm. and feel like you're doing something, but internally you know you're not actually doing anything, but just increasing your own anxiety. So people keep coming back to social media and the, to try to get some sense of, of being engaged, but it doesn't actually go anywhere. It's just this endless supply of stressful memes of, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know bots telling you things you don't know what to believe and things like that. Right, yeah. so it's so been very difficult. And this election, um, can be dividing friendships and and families. So how do you deal with that? What if you know you you just have a very you know different view with someone in your family and you're having conflict with them over it? Yeah, I think one of the first things that goes uh, when people are struggling with anxiety and stress is the ability to communicate. So you you put yourself in your corner and you put the other person in the other corner and, and you're sort of shouting at each other, but you're not really listening. Mm -hmm. And many of us have uh, lost our ability to mentalize, to really see where is this other person coming from? What's it like to be in their shoes and be them in this moment? Can I assume that they're coming at me with kindness and that we just disagree on political issues or religious issues or social issues? And maybe I can learn something from this person I disagree with. Now, if it's a family member or someone you love, you really wanna try to start from that position. It's not necessary for us to agree. Can we agree that we love each other? Can we agree to treat each other with respect and compassion? Mm -hmm. Much different from how people behave online. They say things to their sometimes friends and colleagues they would never say to their face, right? Right, yeah. So there's, uh, I think, a really good reason to try to get along with your family members, even if you disagree with them. That being said, Sometimes you can't, and it's totally appropriate to set boundaries and say, I'm not going to talk politics with mm -hmm. you. I'm done with this discussion. You and I don't see eye to eye. Let's talk about other things. Right. Let's walk away, you know, or just walk away from the conversation yeah. if you can. Yeah. yeah. So for someone who is just feeling especially anxious, um, what, can, what can they do? What, what can you do to make yourself feel better? Right. So the first thing is always self-compassion, self-validation. Like I said in the beginning, it's normal to be, ang to be anxious about something you care about. Mm -hmm. and, and remember, anxiety is a stress response in the body to, to a, a sense that, that uh, there's, there's something you should be afraid of, but you don't really know exactly what it is. There's uncertainty. It's a stress response to uncertainty. So start by just acknowledging, oh, I'm, I'm having this experience in my body. This is what it feels like to be me right now. Where is it? Is it in your chest? Is it in your shoulders? 
And then you could use some skills for sort of down-regulating that anxiety, breathing exercises, meditation, exercise, things like that. Uh, and then another important component would be what we were talking about. Maybe, maybe step away from the social media a little bit. Maybe step away from the constant influx of information that's anxiety producing that you really can't verify and it's just making you think you have more control than you do. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, find something that's uh, tangible and real in front of you. Get into real life experience. Yeah. I'm talking about mindfulness, right? right? Uh, um, uh, you know, play a sport or, or play with your play kids. Play with your dog or your exactly. kids. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Garden. Get, get, get yes. engaged in something that you can really connect to and really be present with that's not so in your head and analytical right. and, and worrisome. Yeah. John, thank you. It's always great talking to you. Thank you. Great very advice much. as usual.